Welcome to the Insight Channel, your user's guide to living life with vision loss. I'm Jazz, I'm a blind occupational therapist, and I'll be your guide. Today we're going to talk about the white cane. Between the First and Second World Wars, there was a movement that started in both Europe and the United States to embrace the quote-unquote white stick as a symbolic identifier for blindness. But it wasn't until after World War II where Dr. Hoover with the Veterans Administration actually recognized the potential of the white stick and transformed it into the long white cane, a tool that blinded veterans could actually use to maneuver safely in their environment. At this point, the stick became the long white cane and the universal symbol for blindness, which was a benefit for a lot of people who were blind, but a detriment to others. Hmm, how can something so simple be both helpful and harmful? Let's start by talking about how it works. It's important to know that the cane can be a helpful tool to keep you safe, but if you don't know how to use it properly, it can actually be dangerous to yourself and others. There are professionals that spend years of specialized study to learn how to assess and teach people how to use the white cane. They're called orientation and mobility specialists, or O&M specialists. I am not an orientation and mobility specialist. I'm an occupational therapist, but I have been trained on how to use the cane and I use it every day in my daily life. Therapists like OTs and PTs do not have the credentials to teach people with low vision or no vision how to use the long white cane safely. That is strictly the realm of the orientation mobility specialist. So if you're interested and you're not sure where to find one, reach out to your state agency for blind services or your local VA for a resource. So here's how it works. First, you meet with an orientation and mobility specialist who will assess you to determine the appropriate length for the cane and what you need to use it to do. Then you'll have a conversation about whether or not you should use a rigid cane or one that folds up. There are many different ways you can use a cane to get information in the world around you, but it all boils down to how you grip and swing the cane. Many people like the structure and the feel of using the common golf grip or handshake grip when you're going through unfamiliar territory. However, if you're in a crowd, you might prefer to use a pencil grip that brings the cane closer into your body as you're moving through. Then again, if you're in unfamiliar territory, you might just want to explore, in which case having more of an open palm grip can help you to explore and get valuable information. Functionally, the long white cane is designed to give you information about the world around you. And that's because it's built from lightweight material that allows you to transmit this information through sound and vibration. Now the tip of the cane is what makes the difference here. I tend to prefer a metal tip, but when you're just learning how to use a cane, you may do better with a marshmallow tip, a ball tip, or even a roller tip. So once you have the right tool and you know how to grip it, the next step is to learn the different techniques for swinging the cane. And this is where the orientation and mobility specialist really shines. There are many different ways you can use it depending on how familiar you are with your environment. For example, just holding the cane in a diagonal pattern in front of you can help you follow a shoreline if you're in familiar territory. But if you're in unfamiliar territory, you're going to want to swing the cane. Now you may do this by using constant contact, by using a touch and drag method, or by using two-point touch. And so on. There are many ways to get from one place to the other while staying oriented and avoiding obstacles when you're using a white cane. One of the simplest methods is to be able to follow a shoreline to get from one place to the other. A shoreline is where one texture meets another, like where the sidewalk meets the grass, or where tile meets carpet, or where the floor meets the wall if you're indoors. The cane can also help you detect 
changes in elevation such as ramps, curbs, or stairs. Oop. And there we go. I found the curb. It can also help you detect changes in terrain, like where the sidewalk whoops, meets the grass. Also, where tile meets carpet, if you're indoors. It can help you to detect obstacles that are in your way to keep you, to keep you from tripping and falling. And it can detect cues and clues in your environment to help you stay oriented and know where you are. Like this low hanging tree and this crack. Once I find them, I know exactly where I am in my neighborhood. Now you know how the cane works and who can help you make it work for you. So where does the harmful part come in that I mentioned at the beginning? Since the 1930s, the long white cane has been embraced as the identifier of blindness, which was great. It opened doors for people who were comfortable with their blindness and needed to be recognized. However, there are other people who aren't quite comfortable and haven't accepted their vision loss yet. And for those, the white cane can be intimidating because they're not quite ready to be recognized as being blind. And for them, it can be a barrier. I know this because I used to be that person. When I was younger, I wanted to be seen like everybody else and so I didn't use a cane. I took my chances for running into people or tripping into things. And I just figured, hey, I'll just play it off as an accident. And so, can you believe that? I actually thought it was better to be seen as being careless or clumsy than visually impaired. We all want to be seen as confident and competent and one of the crowd. That's normal. I tend to be a determined person. So after college, I realized that the only way to prove to myself that I was truly independent was to move away from home. So I did, and I learned a lot of lessons along the way. One of the most important was that there are a lot of resources out there to help with independence. Once I embraced that notion and started um, opening myself up to these resources, then I was truly able to live independently. Learning how to use the white cane was probably one of the most important resources that I embraced, and it has gotten me to where I am today. Once I learned how to use the white cane, my world became bigger and I was able to travel independently with more confidence. And actually, people ah, did not look at me with pity because I was blind like I originally feared. They actually tended to be quite helpful and um, give me assistance with a smile. I've learned that being a productive blind person actually makes me interesting because your average sighted person can't imagine how to function without sight. So that's not pity, that's respect. So does the long white cane symbolize blindness? Absolutely. But it doesn't symbolize who you are as a person. For example, I like to think I make this cane look good. I'm not a blind person. I'm a person who happens to be blind, and there's a difference. The cane does not define who you are or how people perceive you. Only you have that kind of power. So if you have low vision or no vision, I encourage you to embrace your resources so you can develop the skills and the confidence to respect yourself and to live life to the fullest. Remember, it's a lot more impressive to avoid obstacles with a cane than to run into them without one. Don't let changes in your vision change who you are. Just because you have vision loss, it doesn't mean that you can't do things. You just need to learn how to get visual information differently. The white cane can do that for you by giving you cues and clues to your environment through sound and vibration. So don't let a symbol become a barrier to your success. 
The white cane can open your world, enhance your opportunities, and give you freedoms that you never imagined were possible with vision loss. So if you have low vision or no vision, I encourage you to test drive a cane. See how it works for you. I did, and it positively changed my life. So now you have insight into how this works. You'd be amazed what you can do with the right tool. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, click the thumbs up at the bottom of your screen. If you'd like to know when I post new videos, sign up for notifications. Send me comments, questions, and ideas for future videos. I'd love to hear from you. My job is to answer your questions and to give you the tips, tools, and techniques for success for life with vision loss. So no worries, you got this. See you next time.